Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. We are defending Miles Edgeworth in our next case. I don't even want to talk anymore. I just want to jump right into it. If you guys are cool with that, you down with that. Everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go. December 26, 9.44 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Karma? That's right. Manfred von Karma. He's the best prosecutor there is. He hasn't lost a case in his 40-year career. God damn! He is a god of prosecution, right? A god! Not a single case! He'll do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. Even... Even that? You know what I'm saying? Sounds like someone else I know, Edgeworth. Huh. You don't understand. I mean, he'll really do anything. Manfred von Karma is a man to be feared. That's quite a claim coming from someone who forges evidence. He taught me what it really means to prosecute. What? Just picture a prosecutor as vicious as me, multiplied by a factor of 10. Okay, Edgeworth, damn, you gotta be so extra with it. Uh, so, so was he your teacher then, Edgeworth? Something like that. And now he's trying to get you found guilty? What a creep. Oh, wait, maybe he's planning on losing on purpose to help you out. Not a chance. He hasn't lost once in 40 years. 40 years! He's as ruthless as me. Times 20! I thought you said by a factor of 10! Now 20? What's next, 80? That's pretty ruthless. Like I said, he's a god among prosecutors. I guess that's something like Mia was to me. Speaking of Mia... Um, Maya? Uh-huh. We could really be using Mia's help right now, don't you think? Oh... I can't. Sorry, I tried. I really tried, but I couldn't reach. You couldn't reach? I think it's because I haven't been training. My powers are weak again. Oh man, what bad timing. Well, get in the freaking gym, you weakling! I'm really sorry. I'll try my best. I hope so. What are you whispering about? Oh, it's nothing. Well, it's time. Let's head in. Okay, so we're facing a guy who hasn't lost once in 40 years. Well, he's about to take the biggest L right after Christmas. 10 a.m., District Court number three. Let's get it, guys. Oh, yeah. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Von Karma? Is the prosecution ready? Ooh. You seriously think that I would stand here were I not completely prepared? Right! My apologies! He's even got the judge scared! Very well! Your opening statement, please! Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Oh, nothing, of course! That should be fine! The prosecution may call its first witness! What's with this guy? Is he royalty or something? How am I supposed to fight against this? I call the detective in charge of this case. Detective Dick Gumshoe. Okay, Gumshoe's first. Let's see how this goes. That's Big Dick Gumshoe to you, buddy. Describe the incident. Now! Yes, sir! Detective Gumshoe looks nervous. Uh, please take a look at the map. The murder happened late Christmas Eve around midnight. There was one boat in the middle of the lake. There were two men on the boat. Now, there happened to be a woman camping here on the edge of the lake. At 12.10 a.m., she heard two pistol shots. Then the boat started to move. It went towards the boat rental shop. Two shots, though. Hmm. Overhead map added to the court record. Overhead map of Gord Lake. Testify to the court about the arrest. Now! Wait, Mr. Von Karma! Yes? Actually, I'm the one that's supposed to be handling these proceedings. Oh my god, this guy, his swag. Wrong. There is only one thing you need to do here. You will slam down your gavel and say the word guilty! That is your role! Yes, of course. Yes, quite right. <laughs> this freaking judgment! Oh my god, we're screwed! No, he's not! Oh, we're so screwed. Witness testimony. All right, guys. Both eyes. Lock in. A man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. 
We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all. But, the next morning, the body was found in the lake. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. That was it? Hmm, I see. Very well. Begin your cross-examination, attorney, now! Jeez, buddy, calm down! He had way too many Red Bulls this morning. A man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. Okay, let's question that. You received a call from a man? Uh, yup. But you said there was a woman camping there. She was the one who heard the two gunshots, right? Oh, dang, that's not a devilish! That woman and the man who called in the report are two different people, obviously! Different people? There were two witnesses! Ugh. Their testimonies were quite similar, however. Today I've summoned the woman who was camping. Oh, he looks like he's summoning something with his devil ass! The woman who was camping, lot of heart. What happened next, detective? We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Wait, you found Mr. Edgeworth, huh? What was Mr. Edgeworth like when you saw him then? Well, from what I saw, he looked pretty relaxed. Not like a murderer at all, really. Oh, dude, the way that sounds, guys. Detective, the court requires the facts, not your opinion. How many years have you been on the force? Facts only, detective. Hard, cold, objective facts. Y yes, sir. Man, he's got a share of objections. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. But why? Why is that? Well, we found the murder weapon in the boat. The murder weapon? A pistol. Detective Gumshoe? That is a vital piece of information. Please revise your testimony. Right. Sorry, Your Honor. I was surprised that guy didn't object. The murder weapon we found in the boat was decisive evidence. Nick, doesn't it seem like Detective Gumshoe is being a little vague? I bet Von Karma is feeding him lines. His testimony is probably filled with landmines just waiting for me to press. What do we do? Grit our teeth and press, I guess. What else can we do? Well said, Nick. You're the man. I am the man. I'm the freaking man. The man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. Hold it! How long was it between receiving the report and your arrival at the lake? Uh, well, I'd say it was about three minutes. That's pretty fast. That's what she said. Our motto for the month is get there quick. Detective, you will refrain from casually revealing department secrets. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. I look forward to your next year's salary review. So much to look forward to these days. This is no time for dejected daydreaming. Continue! Yes, sir. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all, but why? Why didn't you think he was suspicious? You should know. We have a deep, trusting relationship with the prosecutors. I knew he was going to do that. I knew it. Detective, the court isn't interested in your musics. Deep, trusting, poppycock! I've never heard so many flippant comments from an active detective on the force. Ugh. Detective Gumshoe doesn't look so good. Continue! Now! Very demanding. But the next morning, a body was found in the lake. Did you find any clues on the body? A single bullet was recovered from the body. He was shot through the heart, fatally. Judge, here's the bullet. It didn't strike bones, so its shape is well preserved. Very well, the court accepts this bullet into evidence. Pistol bullet added to the court record, but you said he shot twice, so he ain't that nice then, because he went doog doog, only one connected, something's not adding up. Found in the victim's body, fired from a 22 caliber pistol. The murder weapon we found in the boat was decisive evidence. What about the pistol made it decisive evidence? <laughs> uh, he has the same evil laugh as Edgeworth! 
There were fingerprints on the pistol found in the boat. They were clear prints from Mr. Edgeworth's right hand. What? Order! Order! So, Mr. Edgeworth's fingerprints were found on the murder weapon? Yes, Your Honor. Judge, this is the weapon in question. Accepted into evidence. Pistol added to the court record. The murder weapon, 22 caliber, fired three times, bears prints from Edgeworth's right hand. Okay. Members of the courts. We now have the pistol used in the murder and the bullet found in the body. Detective. Yes, sir. Was the bullet found in the body fired from this pistol? Yes. The ballistic markings on the bullet match the pistol. Hmm. Hey, Nick. What does he mean, ballistic markings? Shocking! To imagine someone here does not know something as basic as ballistic markings. Nick, he's glaring at me! <laughs> Very well, I'll explain. Actually, Judge, you do it! Huh? Me? Um, ahem. Ballistic markings are like the fingerprints of a gun. The barrel leaves distinctive marks on each bullet it fires. You can examine these ballistic fingerprints to see which gun fired the shot. It's quite accurate. Indeed. This leads to one inevitable conclusion. The bullet found in the victim's heart was without a doubt fired from this pistol. This pistol, which, as you may recall, was covered with the defendant's own fingerprints. <laughs> Guys, come on! Come on! Arda! Arda! This is bad. This makes it look like Edgeworth did it. Well, Judge? I'd say it's almost decisive, yes. Honestly, I could declare a verdict at this point. However... I hate it when he does that. <laughs> you wish to hear the witness speak, no doubt. Very well. I am somewhat fatigued, and so I will take a brief break. I will call my witness after the recess. Which will last ten minutes. Judge! Yes? What are you doing? A 10 minute recess! Now! But wait, I... Just bang your flimsy gavel and get on with it, man! Yes! <laughs> Ahem, this court will take a 10 minute recess! Who's running this court anyway? Oh man, we got a pussy boy judge, this is not good! This is a rare, rare bad! Oh, edgy boy! Edgeworth, what's going on here? Your fingerprints were on the murder weapon. Uh, hmm. And that Focky photo makes one thing clear. The only one who could have shot the man was the person in the photo. True. Was that you in the boat? Yes, it was me. What? But you must believe me. I didn't shoot him. Then who did? I don't know. You don't know? Weren't you right there? I heard a gunshot from very close by. Then, the other man fell from the boat. I can't say why, but... I thought at the time that he had shot himself. You mean it was a suicide? That's the only explanation I can come up with. Huh? How am I going to convince anyone of that? Say, Maya? Huh? What? Any progress with Mia? Oh, sorry, it's no good. Ugh. I know. I'm no good for anything, am I, Nick? If I can't call my sister, I might as well not be here, right? No, I need you here. Yeah, you're useless. <laughs> Never! I need you here! No, of course not. I need you here. I can see you're always trying to help out. Even if you don't actually help, it's the thought that counts, right? It's okay, Nick. You don't have to make me feel better. I don't know anything about trials or defense. What's more, I'm a spirit medium who can't even contact spirits. Aw, everyone has their off days. I've just been getting lucky lately, but you never know when my luck is gonna run out. Really? Whoa, whoa! Right! Don't jinx this case any more than it already is! It's bad for my heart! Oh, oh, sorry. Whoops! Okay, 10 minute recess. We back in this thing, boys! Court is now in session, and girls, can't forget about my girls. Mr. Van Karma, call your witness. Yes. 
Will Miss Lotta Heart take the stand? Lotta Heart, you are a research student at a university. She's a research student? She looked like a research mom, a grandmom. That I am. Good. Begin by telling us what you saw the night of the incident. And don't add anything trivial or subjective. Understand? Y'all need to learn some manners. Understand? Yeah, I understand. I understand. Uh, very well. Your testimony, please. Okay, guys. Witness testimony from Lot of Heart. I'm gonna need you guys to give me a lot of focus. It was Christmas Eve, just after midnight, I reckon. I was in my car. I heard this bang come up from the lake. When I looked out the window, I saw two gents in a boat. Then there was another bang. There wasn't nary a thing on the lake but that boat. Enough. Huh? Judge, she happened to take a photo of the incident. This is that photo. Accept it as evidence. Oh, well, this is a surprise. This looks like the very moment of the murder. Okay, guys, we know that, all right? Arda, I will remove people from this courtroom if I do not have Arda immediately. As the witness testified, she looked at the lake when... <laughs> I'm still tripping off the orders. As the witness testified, she looked at the lake when she heard the shots. There were no other boats on that lake. So, the man in the boat with the victim must have been the one who shot him. Yes, it was the defendant, Miles Edgeworth. Well, Judge? The evidence is decisive. I have very little doubt about this case. Very well. This court finds the defendant. Objection. Yeah, object that shit! Wait, Your Honor. I haven't cross-examined the witness yet. A cross-examination? We have photographic proof. What question can there possibly be? This photo is worth a thousand words, and they all read guilty! You lose. Or, do you claim to have found a contradiction in her testimony? Very well. If you have to, you may cross-examine the witness. You will only flounder and ask meaningless questions. You will fail to find anything. And then, I will have you held in contempt of court! Uh, Nick? Contempt? Contempt of court, you know. I guess I understand. Well, what are you gonna do? Do you really think there's a contradiction with the facts in her testimony? I think there was. Obviously, there's gotta be, right guys? I think I noticed one little thing. Wow, I'm impressed, Nick. I didn't notice anything. Right, let's take him on. Yeah, I got a bad feeling about this. I understand. I will cross-examine the witness. <laughs> Very well. I pray for your sake this isn't a waste of time. Me too. Cross-examination, guys. Everybody's already locked in. I know you guys are. It was Christmas Eve, just after midnight, I reckon. I was in my car. I heard this bang come up from the lake. Hold it! So, you weren't looking at the lake at that time? Nope. I looked after I heard the noise. She said that already. I asked you to find contradictions. Not leisurely chat with the witness. Uh. When I looked out the window, I saw two gents in a boat. Hold it! Could you clearly see the two men? Just look at the picture. Clear enough for you? Uh-oh. Press further. Wait a second. I wasn't asking you about the photo. I was asking if you saw the two men! Uh, yeah, well, of course. The witness has testified that she saw them. There's also a photo. You'd best look elsewhere for your precious contradictions. He jumped in quick. He's hiding something. Then there was another bang. Hold it. What other bang? Why was there two bangs? 
Were you watching the very moment the shot rang out? Well, yeah, sure. You're asking meaningless questions. Meaningless! Contradictions, Mr. Wright. Not meaningless babble! But Karma, I think I hate you. He's trying to keep me from talking to the witness. To what end? There wasn't nary a thing on the lake but that boat. There wasn't any contradictions in there. Sorry, Nick. If only my sister were here. Maya's really taking this hard. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see something real quick. So, we found the bullet, right? Found in the victim's body. The ballistic markings match the murder weapon's barrel, okay? The murder weapon, 22 caliber, fired three times. Bears prints from Edgeworth's right hand, okay? Why did they have to specify right hand? It was held in his right hand, okay? Because you can distinguish left and right. Okay, so it was in his right hand. That's gotta be an important clue. Time of death sometime on the 24th or 25th caused one bullet shot to the heart. Taken automatically on 1225 at 12.15 a.m. Okay, let's check this. Let me check the photo. Is that a left hand? Because if the arm is facing outward, that's a left hand. I think it's his left hand. It's gotta be. The photo is kind of blurry, but I think that's his left hand. That's actually a big deal if we're, like, talking about right hand, left hand. Uh, this is nothing. Article about a monster. I'm a monster, okay? I'm the monster you read about in the articles. This is nothing, I think, too. Well, that's where the girl was in her car, right? So, what did she see? There wasn't nary a thing on that boat but the lake. Hold it! Are you sure about that? Yeah, sure as a country gal can be. That sounds pretty sure. Press further. How come you're so sure? Well, heck, I scanned the whole lake. Scanned the whole lake? It's almost like she was more interested in the lake than the boat. Miss Hart, you... Mr. Wright, the witness has answered the question in full. Ugh. No need for further questions. Objection sustained. Uh, that's what I'm... Sustained! Yes, of course. Oh, great. What am I supposed to do now? There weren't any contradictions in there. Sorry, Nick. If only my sister were here. Oh, what the heck? When I looked out the window, I saw two gents in a boat. Okay, is this what we present? Do we say... OBJECTION! This evidence clearly reveals... Oh, no. That's when I know I got the wrong answer. Crap. Oh, I'm gonna get a strike. Damn it! Okay, this is not good. I'm scared. You know what, guys? She said there was another bang, but there was only one bullet recovered. I think we gotta wind it up and go... OBJECTION! This evidence clearly reveals the contradiction. Oh, no! No! Oh, I'm so screwed. No need for further questions. Objection sustained. What? What do I do? Enough! I think we've heard all we need to hear, Mr. Wright. It seems you are unable to find a contradiction in the testimony worth noting. But, Your Honor... You keep your promise. Mr. Wright... I'm afraid that I will have to penalize any further outbursts by holding you in contempt of court. And if that happens, you'll have to leave the courtroom immediately. Understood? So this was supposed to happen? Like I wasn't supposed to find a contradiction? Uh, uh-huh. Nick, a lot of testimony is fishy, Nick. Real fishy. I know what you mean. But if I can't say anything, what can I do? I believe we've covered the evidence sufficiently to make a decision. And pass your judgment. Very well. Mr. Miles Edgeworth, please take the stand. Who is that? It was me. Maya. Is something wrong? Do, do you need to use the facilities? No, I do not. Lot of heart. Your testimony stinks! It's unclear whether you were actually looking at the lake. It's highly doubtful that you actually saw Mr. Edgeworth. Tell us the truth! This is a matter of life or death! Lada! Did you really clearly see Mr. Edgeworth that night? Did you see him fire that pistol? You will stand down! The court does not acknowledge the defense's outburst! Answer me, Lada! What's the big idea treating me like some kind of criminal? I saw him, I swear it. I saw Edgeworth. 
Enough. Judge, declare the defense in contempt of court. Yes, yes, of course. I'm sorry, but you were warned. Guard, escort Mr. Wright out of the courtroom. He is in contempt of court and must leave. No, no. No, don't touch me. Get your filthy paws off me. Wait. I was the one who made the outburst, Your Honor. Nick is innocent. Ha! Huh. What's the difference? All that remains is the guilty verdict to be declared. Isn't that right, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Wrong! Wrong! What? Did you hear what Miss Hart just said? She said she clearly saw Mr. Edgeworth. That was not in the testimony! That changes her testimony, and I have a right to cross-examine her again. Yeah, the right to cross-examine. Order! 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 You're in contempt of court! It's too late for wild claims! Judge, sustain my objection! I'm sorry, Mr. Von Karma, but I cannot... What? Miss Lotta Hart has made a new testimony. The defense does have a right to cross-examine her again. But he is in contempt of court! No, I am! If you're gonna arrest someone, arrest me! Hmm... Very well. My F.A. You will leave the courtroom immediately! Nick, I did what I could. You have to do the rest. Good luck. Maya! What a gal. What a great gal. <laughs> I care not for this melodrama. Listen well, Mr. Wright. I do not tolerate badgering of my witnesses. I'm running out of time. I better find a contradiction in here or else. Mr. Wright, begin your cross-examination. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, lock in everybody. This is gonna be a doozy. I saw it clear as day. The man on the boat was Edgeworth. That's it? Uh-oh. I don't know if I can find anything in that... But I can't squander Maya's efforts either. Okay, let's hold it! Well, what about the other man? You cannot expect to be allowed to blithely ignore your promise, Mr. Wright. I believe you claimed there was a contradiction in the witness's testimony. Well, find it! If you can! Mr. Wright, I have to assign you a penalty! What?! I only have two! Damn! That's it? Uh-oh, I don't know if I can find anything in that, but I can't squander Maya's efforts either. Wow. I saw it clear as day, the man on the boat was Mr. Edgeworth. Okay, the man on the boat was Mr. Edgeworth, okay. Um, let's see here. Let's check it. Um, you saw it clear as day, right? Oh, shoot. Okay, so I have two theories. I either show the photo, or I show the map. If I'm wrong on either, you guys see it right here. I only have two strikes. I'm screwed. So we're gonna wind it up and objection. Oops. <laughs> I guess I guess my wind up didn't work. We're gonna do it again. Wind it up and objection. Gotcha. Gotcha, Miss Hart. Finally. Woo -hoo -hoo! What? You got what? Look at this photograph. Oh yes, we picked the right one. The photo I took. The very same. There's something I want you to see in this photo. It's quite clearly visible. The fog, Miss Hart. So? So? This picture was taken with professional, high-quality film, correct? Yet even it could not capture the faces of the men on the boat. Yet you claim you saw Mr. Edgeworth! How? What? Ooh. Yes, discuss! Discuss her lies! Mr. Wright has a point! That's why I told her not to say that in her testimony. Please! Yet now she has said it, Mr. Von Karma. How could you possibly see Mr. Edgeworth? Explain yourself! Miss Hart? What? Could you see the defendant that night? Of course. I said I could and I meant I could. Then please testify as to your circumstances of your sighting. I did it. I finally found a hole in Von Karma's carefully vague testimony. Okay, lock in, guys. Lock in. We got lucky there. We dodged a bullet. You're right. It was a cold night, and the fog was thick as grits. 
So once I finished setting up my camera, I got back in the car. Still, I brought my binoculars with me. When I heard that noise out on the lake, I looked with my binoculars. See? No problem. What? Girl? Hmm, you use binoculars? Very well. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. This one better be good. Oh, shoot. Will I get a penalty if I hold the witness? Like, do a question? You're right. It was a cold night and the mist was thick as grits. So once I finished sitting on my camera, I got back in the car. Hold it! Please don't penalize me. Your camera. Yeah. It's got an automatic... Come on! The issue we are concerned with here is Miss Hart seeing Mr. Edgeworth. The camera has nothing to do with this at all. Objection sustained. Ugh. He's not letting her answer any of my questions. Still, I brought my binoculars with me. Where are they? Can I see them? Can I take a look? Binoculars. Yeah, binoculars. Yesterday, you mentioned that you were out looking for shooting stars, correct? Well, yeah. Wouldn't you need a telescope, not binoculars, for that? I've got doubts about your camera, too. Was that really to take pictures of meteor showers? The camera is irrelevant to this case. You can't say that for certain. Hmm, Mr. Wright? Is the camera really relevant to the case? If you believe it is, you may continue with this line of questioning. But know this. If you find nothing with this, there will be consequences. Well, Mr. Wright, do you wish to press further about the camera? Of course, because I have nothing else to go on. This is a make it or break it time. The camera is of your utmost importance, Your Honor. It is perhaps the key to this entire case. Therefore, I will continue my line of questioning. Wow, maybe I went a little overboard there. Very well. Miss Hart, you will testify to the court about the camera. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. The camera was set up to take pictures of a meteor shower. Miss Hart. What made you choose that lake to photograph meteors? You know the fog gets thick on that lake. It's not very suited to stargazing. Yeah, well, you see, I... I guess I wasn't thinking too straight. Ha! <laughs> Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness because of her challenged intellect. Now, wait a minute. Continue your testimony. You were saying how it was that you saw Edgeworth? <laughs> No unnecessary comments, please. When I heard that noise out on the lake, I looked with my binoculars. I don't care how many Von Karma objections I get. I'm gonna find a hole in this testimony if it's the last thing I do. The camera was set up to take pictures of a meteor shower. Well, let's look at the camera. Set up to automatically take a picture when a loud noise is detected. Meteor showers don't make loud noises, right? Let's wind it up, guys, and OBJECTION! You were photographing shooting stars? That's a lie! This says who? I saw the camera you set up yesterday. It was pointed directly at the lake. You have to point the camera upwards to take photos of the stars, Miss Hart! Oh! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? The witness was not at the lake to photograph shooting stars, Your Honor. Well then, what exactly was she photographing? Show evidence? I don't know. Show evidence. Your Honor, take a look at this. What was Miss Hart trying to photograph at the lake? Is it this or is it Gordy? I think it's Gordy. It's got to be Gordy because why would she know that there was going to be a murder? It's got to be Gordy! Miss Hart, this is what you were trying to photograph. What's this? A newspaper article? Gordy? Ah, the sighting at Gord Lake. Well, Miss Hart? Uh, I never heard of no lake monster. You got proof or something? Let's see you prove that I was down at the lake trying to photograph this Gordy. I don't have proof. I don't think we have proof, guys. I don't have proof. Well, I don't have proof. Well, your ineptitude is entertaining, Mr. Wright, but enough is enough. I've had enough of your baseless claims made without a hair of evidence to support them. Well, all right. If that's how you want to play, I'll show you evidence. Mr. Wright, are you sure about this? I'm sure sick of that smarmy prosecutor putting me down. Or did he taunt me so I'd get mad and make a mistake? 
Very well, let's see it. And no joking around this time, please. What is proof that the witness was trying to photograph Gordy, the lake monster? This is like the only thing that we got, guys. This map. I don't think that it's going to show anything, though. Because if she was there to do meteor showers, why would she be, like, driven on the lake, right? I think that's got to be it. Like, that's the only evidence that I have. So I'm going to not confidently present this. Please. Here's my proof. It's simple. If it's simple, then why have you obviously made an error, Mr. Wright? Oh, What's that? Go home. Consider a career change. Ah! How can they casually toss aside this evidence? Oops, wrong evidence. All right, guys. I'm so conflicted because the only evidence would have been the map or her camera. It says that it's set up automatically to take a picture when a loud noise is detected faces the lake. This is the only evidence that we have. We have one more chance. If it's wrong, then I got to go through the whole thing again. But we are going to say, take that! The proof, Miss Hart, is your own camera. Your camera was set to take photos in response to loud noises, correct? Thus, this photograph here, taken when a gun fired on the lake. And here, this article about Gordy. According to this article, Gordy made a loud noise when it emerged. Well, you were trying to photograph Gordy, weren't you? That's why you had set your camera to respond to loud noises. Arda, Arda. I see. I too thought it was a little strange. Yeah, sure. Well, Miss Hart, you were camping there to try and take a photo of Gordy, weren't you? Yeah. Not bad. Are all you lawyers that smart? So smart, boy. I was down there trying to photograph Gordy. You got me. So what? Huh? That don't change what I saw, does it? Exactly. Well, you just used several precious minutes of our time to prove. It's nothing more than that the witness is an idiot who thinks monsters exist. Hey! But, as she so suckingly said, so what? It changes nothing. Not true. You were hiding the whole thing about Gordy for some reason. I know it. But what could it have been? Whatever it is, I'm getting to the bottom of this. Miss Hart! Why did you hide the fact that you were searching for Gordy from the court? Please revise your testimony. Right, fine, I'll testify. It won't change nothing, though. Something will change. It has to. And I'm gonna spot it. <sighs> Alright, guys. Another witness testimony. Let's get it. Lock in. Actually, I'm not a research student at a university. I'm an investigative photographer. Imagine what a scoop it'd be if I got a picture of that monster. That's why I was camping out by the lake. But that's all I was hiding. When I heard the bang, I looked right straight out at the lake. There wasn't much else to look at, so I just watched the boat the whole time. Then I saw a flash near one of the men's hands, and I heard another gunshot. I was looking right at the boat the whole time, crossed my heart, and hoped to fry. Okay, there's a lot there. That was kind of juicy. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Objection. The witness's testimony is unchanged from before. Whether she is a research student or a photographer has no bearing on this case. There is no need to waste more of our time with another pointless cross-examination. Uh, hmm. Objection. There you go, Phoenix. I claim the defense is right to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. But karma is up to something, I know it. He doesn't want me to cross-examine her because why? Was there a contradiction? Very well. You may begin the cross-examination. You seem sure of yourself. You must have something in mind. Ha! That would be a first. <laughs> Very funny. You understand that this is your last chance at a cross-examination, Mr. Wright? If there is no problem with the testimony this time, we will let the witness leave. I will announce my verdict at that time, Mr. Wright. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. I think I already saw a contradiction. Or at least something I can question. Actually, I'm not a research student at a university. I'm an investigative photographer. An investigative photographer? Yep. You get your photo and sell it to the press. It's that kind of business. Hey, I was taking pictures at my sister's graduation last year. And guess what? Um, what? There was a UFO just hanging in the sky. A UFO? 
you know, an unidentified flying object, a UFO. That's when I had sort of a revelation. I know I should become an investigative photographer. I, I see. Kind of a shaky basis for a career. Imagine what a scooby would be if I got a picture of that monster. That's why I was camping out by the lake. But that's all I was hiding. When I heard the bang, I looked right straight out at the lake. Exactly what sort of sound was it? Well, I never heard one before, so I can't say for sure, but it sounded like a gunshot. It was a lot sharper a sound than I would have expected. Hmm. There wasn't much else to look at, so I just watched the boat the whole time. There wasn't much else to look at? Yep. I don't know, if she heard a bang and she thought Gordy was out there, I kind of doubt she'd waste any time looking at a boat. What? What did I do now? What are you giving me that look for? Definitely suspicious. Maybe it's time for some evidence. Okay, so she was looking out for Gordy. Is Gordy really all that newsworthy? Heck yeah! They even had him up on the TV! I'm not sure that appearing on the local news rumor of the month segment qualifies. Last month's segment was Bigfoot sighted on Acorn Hill, I believe. Hey! They also had a picture of him in the newspaper, for real! Mr. Wright, this is one fight I do not believe you can win. Let's keep moving, shall we? Yes, your honor. There wasn't much else to look at, so I just watched the boat the whole time. There wasn't much else to look at? Yep. I don't know. If she heard a bang and she thought Gordy was out there... Oh! Oh! Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Because she was looking out for a bang so she could see when Gordy was going to come out the lake. So she was looking for freaking Gordy the whole time. Okay, then I saw a flash near one of the men's hands and I heard a gunshot. Okay, we got to go back to that. There wasn't much else to look at so I just watched the boat the whole time. Okay, so we got to show her this. The article about Gordy because that's what she was looking out for. She was looking out for the bang and she would have thought, hey, isn't that Gordy? So, objection! <laughs> Miss Hart, were you really looking at that boat? What's with you? Of course I was looking at it. I was the only thing out there. Any normal person would be looking at it. I agree. Any normal person would. But you are far from normal. What? Y'all want to step over here and say that? You were camping at the lake to take a picture of Gordy! Think about it. What would you do if you heard a loud noise? You'd be scanning the lake for any sign of Gordy, that's what! You wouldn't give the boat a second thought! Uh, yes, not a second thought! Arda! Continue, Mr. Wright! You testified that you were watching the boat through binoculars. However, you wouldn't need binoculars to watch that boat! You needed them to search for Gordy, and that's what you were doing! Well? Huh. Well, now that y'all mention it, I did sort of take my binoculars and kind of scan the lake a bit. I mean, Gordy might be out there and all. Miss Hart! Are you saying that you were not watching the boat then? <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I wasn't fibbing, really. I was just, I thought, you know, I could be witness to a murder and all. I kind of got excited. I was sure I was watching the boat, till now. This, this is totally uncalled for. B but hey, you got the photograph, you got proof. Hmm, still, we can't see who is shooting who in this. Right, right. That's why I took this photo in Witness, that's enough. You've had a long day. Shut your pie hole. You shut my what? What was she gonna say? She took the photo and what? Wait a second. She even had a photograph to prove it. But you really can't tell from the photo who was shooting. That's why she said she's gonna enlarge the photo. She said it'll drop the quality of might, but should let us see who's who. She enlarged that photo. Why won't Von Karma let her show it? I've got a hunch. I bet that enlarged photo shows something bad for Von Karma. This is my chance. If I'm wrong though, it'll mean prison for Edgeworth or worse. What should I do? Make her show the enlargement. Let's get it! 
Miss Hart, look at this photograph. You enlarged this photograph, did you not? Yeah, I did. Why has that enlargement not been presented to the court? Objection. Because it does not exist. What are y'all talking about? You were the one who told me not to show it in court in the first place. Got him, you old fool. Yes, he's an old fool, jury. What's the meaning of this, Mr. Von Karma? Uh, uh. Miss Hart. Show the photo to the court. Show us the enlargement. The prosecution objects to the submission of this evidence. Objection denied. Yeah, buddy. Thank you for growing balls. The witness will show the enlargement to the court. Here it is. Oh, I knew it! It's a left-handed pistol holder! Hmm, we can still not see who's firing in this. It could be the defendant, or maybe it's not. Regardless, I'll accept this as evidence. Lake photo added to the court record. Taken automatically on 1225. Happy now, Mr. Wright? Huh, there has to be something. You asked for the enlargement, you got the enlargement. And little good it has done any of us. That's why I requested she not show it. Hmm. I suppose this means that the cross-examination is over, obviously. Then I would like to close the cross-examination of Miss Lotta Hart. And none too soon. That was a flagrant waste of my time. Mr. Von Karma, do you have anything to add? I stated everything I needed to when this trial began. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Nothing, of course. Then I believe it is time for me to declare my verdict. Wait, it's not supposed to go like this. There has to be a clue in this photo somewhere. I know it. Just let me choose. This is bad, real bad. What should I do? Object to the enlargement. Show other evidence. Wait and see. Show other evidence, right? I don't want to object the enlargement. Wait. Your Honor, this evidence. I believe we have spent enough time talking about evidence. Hmm, indeed. We've heard opinions on every piece of evidence but this enlargement. I see no point in retracing our steps. This is bad, real bad. What should I do? Oh, object to the enlargement, I guess. Your Honor, there is something decidedly strange with this enlargement. What might that be? I know what it is, just let me show evidence. Mr. Wright! You will show the court what you mean! What about this photo is strange? Okay, here goes nothing. I'll show the judge what's strange about this photo. Okay. His hand. The, the hand that's holding the gun! Here, your honor! The shooter? I'm not sure I understand. What about the shooter is strange? Look at the hand holding the pistol, your honor. The hand? That hand directly contradicts another piece of evidence. This man's left hand does what? Let me show you. I'll show you the evidence the left hand contradicts. It says, Bear Prince from Edgeworth's right hand. All right, you guys ready for this? Let's wind it up and boom! The evidence is clear. The man in this photograph is holding the pistol in his left hand. However, the prints on the murder weapon were from Edgeworth's right hand. Or go. The man shooting the pistol in this photograph is not Mr. Edgeworth. Damn! Let's go, guys. Now that everyone in the courtroom has quieted down, I would like to reconvene this court of law. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You have given us definitive proof today. We now know that it was not Mr. Edgeworth who fired the pistol that night. However, this leaves us with a rather large problem. If Mr. Edgeworth didn't do it, then who shot our victim? Precisely. As we have seen, there were no other people on the lake that night. Who but the defendant could have shot the victim? Miss Hart, the victim himself, Larry. Who's Larry? Oh, Larry, our friend, Larry Butts. Miss Hart, the victim himself. Wait, 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 wait. Why would Miss Hart shoot him? Let's say the victim himself. Wait, why would Miss Hart shoot this guy? Oh, God, I have no idea. I only have one chance. It's gotta be the victim himself. There is only one explanation remaining. 
The man who shot the victim was none other than the victim himself. Arda! Arda! So, you're saying that the victim committed suicide? Yes, Your Honor. I can think of no other explanation. Hmm. Indeed, that does seem to be the only remaining option. I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. But suicide is out of the question. What? An examination of the victim's wounds revealed the distance at which he was shot. The distance? The victim was clearly shot from further than a meter away. A meter? That's three feet. There is no way it could have been suicide. Arda! Arda! Mr. Von Karma, are you sure of the accuracy of your data? Of course. I had already considered the possibility of suicide, you see. Autopsy report updated in the court record. Uh, shot from approximately one meter away. Hmm. I see. Very well. Allow me to state my opinion. Considering the situation, the shooter had to be the defendant, Mr. Edgeworth. However, the prints on the gun reveal that the shooter was not Mr. Edgeworth. This is a conundrum. Therefore, I would like to suspend proceedings for this trial for the day. The court orders the defense and the prosecution to further investigate this matter. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. That is all. This court is adjourned. Goodness gracious, this case. Wow. December 26, 115 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Whew, that was a close one. Hey, don't you have anything to say? No, I have yet to be declared innocent, right? Well, yeah, but what happened out there on that lake anyway? If he didn't commit suicide, then who? The shooter was about a meter away, too. What? Don't give me that look. I did not kill him! I was just kidding around. Huh. Look, I'm gonna go check on Maya. Oh, right. What? Tell her something for me. What? Tell... Tell her to watch what she says in court. That's all. Would it kill you to just state how you really feel with a thanks, Edgeworth? I requisition a transcript of Lada's entire testimony. I thought it might give me some ammunition for the trial tomorrow. Of course she didn't see the shooter. So the only part of her testimony that stood was the bang she heard. Lada's deposition added to the court. I heard two sounds like gunshots just after midnight. Okay. To be continued. Woo! What a great freaking episode. I can't believe that. I want to jump into another one right now, but my throat is just fully gone from doing all that. If you guys enjoyed what you saw and want to see the next episode as soon as possible, make sure you guys give this video one big fat like and tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude!